Emerald is over 20 years old now, but last month we uncovered a shocking flaw in its AI for the first time. I researched this myself because I wanted to disprove it, but the truth is just bizarre. This is by far the most complex and badly behaved bug I've ever seen in any game's AI. When you think of famous and stupid bugs in Pokemon, you probably think about the Gen 1 AI that tunnel visions on super effective moves. This leads to funny moments like Erika using Poison Powder against Venusaur forever because Poison is super effective on grass. Or famously, Twitch plays Pokemon abused an Elite Four fight to force rest against an underleveled Venomoth. I think Gen 1 gets bullied too much for this. The behavior seems silly, but the AI is not misbehaving. The AI is just executing the code as it was written. I want you to be the judge of Gen 1 versus Gen 3 AI after you hear the story I'm about to tell you. The story starts when I got a short message from factory player Dave Glorbus. Now, I get a lot of reports from people saying the AI is broken or that there's a new discovery. Most of the time, that person is just forgetful or has misread some of our documentation. But Dave knows what he's talking about. And this scenario sounded particularly innocent. He was facing Glalie 1 with Jolteon, and Glalie 1 started behaving very strangely. This might not sound like a big deal, but understanding and predicting the AI is extremely important in the factory. And this is because unlike almost every other challenge in Pokemon, the factory actually has the tools to viciously fight back against the player. Factory players are also particularly interested in turn one behaviors. This is because in the late game factory, when you face an enemy like Glalie, you don't actually know which Glalie set it's going to be. So working that out as fast and efficiently as possible is really important. For this video, we won't worry about that. We'll just focus on Glalie 1. Glalie 1 is a simple set. It has Ice Beam, Crunch, Hail, and Protect. And in Late Game Factory, you exclusively fight against a game's Smart AI. It's best to think of the AI as working in layers. Smart AI has three layers, Basic, Kill, and Expert. Each of these layers acts on each of the moves that Glady has, adding or subtracting to that move score. After all the layers have been run on all the moves, the AI will then pick randomly from whatever move or moves has the highest score. Basic AI is a set of checks to make sure that the move will not fail if it's used. Kill AI does two things. First, if a move does kill, give it plus 4 score. And second, for moves that don't kill, but still do damage, if that move is not the strongest move, give it minus 1. Expert AI then encourages a wide variety of behaviours. This includes stuff like boost stats at high HP, but do not boost stats at low HP. For Glalie vs Jolteon, the AI layers seem quite simple. Basic AI does not matter at all, since all of these moves are going to do something. Ice Beam and Crunch both don't kill Jolteon at max HP. Crunch is weaker than Ice Beam though, so it gets minus one in the kill AI layer. Ice Beam and Crunch do not have any expert AI. Hail has no AI that's going to act on turn one, and Protect has a simple 50% chance to lower its score. So the highest score is zero. And overall, there should be a 41.7% chance to use Ice Beam, a 41.7% chance to use Hail, and a 16.6% chance to use Protect. Now before one month ago, the order of these layers didn't matter. I'm going to come back to this. Because the thing is, Glalie is never going to use Ice Beam on turn one. Literally never. Let's talk about Protect. Protect is a surprisingly buggy move. Back in Ruby and Sapphire, it had a one in 65,000 chance to fail. Emil did fix this at least. For almost a decade, the community has known that part of the expert AI for Protect has a bug. You see, a part of the expert AI for Protect is meant to encourage its use in clever scenarios. For example, if the opponent is poisoned, or if the opponent just used the move Lock On. The problem is that Game Freak put the wrong check on Lock On. Instead of checking if the AI has just been hit by Lock On, it instead checks if it has not been hit by it. Of course, this is almost always true, and it means that Protect almost always gets a score of plus two as part of its expert AI layer. And because Protect can fail if used on consecutive turns, the AI prefers not to use Protect on consecutive turns. But this doesn't matter to turn one of the battle. The AI obviously did not use Protect on the last turn, because there was no last turn. There's a very powerful conclusion to this. Since Protect therefore always has scores of plus one or plus two on turn one, then Glalie 1 is always going to use Protect on turn 1. That's really important for factory players to know. But, but Dave's message said that Glalie 1 specifically did not use Protect on turn 1. It used Hail on turn 1. This should obviously be impossible. Dave then said he thought the problem was with Hail. But Hail's expert AI is really simple. I didn't think it was this. I thought the problem had to be related to yet another Protect AI bug that me and Dave had discovered months earlier. 
You see, Protect should get a score of plus one at minimum if it wasn't used last turn. This makes it incredibly predictable throughout the game. But me and Dave noticed the Protect does not get used as much as it should. The reason for this is that the AI's logic for checking if Protect was used last turn is broken. The AI can count how many consecutive uses of Protect it's had, but this count only ever gets updated if Protect is used. For example, let's say Glalie uses Protect on turn 1. On turn 2, it now thinks the Protect count is 2. Let's say it then uses Hail on turn 2. Now it's turn 3, but Glalie thinks it still used Protect last turn. This is because when Hail was selected, the Protect count should have been set back to 0, but it wasn't. It just stayed at 1, which was the value it had after turn 1. This was a really important discovery. Not just because it's a warning about the predictability of Protect after it's used once, but also because it means if the AI ever successfully uses Protect twice in a row, Protect gets stuck at a negative score and basically can't be used again at all for the match. So this was my idea. Perhaps the Protect count on turn 1 of the battle is somehow wrong. Maybe the Protect count from the previous battle is still in the AI's memory. But this wasn't true. Something they've confirmed with even more testing is that Hail and Protect are always being used before Ice Beam. It seemed like Protect was some kind of accidental misdirect. The real culprit really was Hail. It was at this point I knew something was deeply wrong. This really didn't make sense. It's not just familiarity with the code base and knowing that Hail Expert AI is very simple. Millions of people have played Emerald. It's an old game. Maybe only hundreds of people who know the AI quite well have played Emerald, but those hundreds of people with collectively have played thousands of games. Most of all, even if I think everyone else is dumb, I know for a fact that I've played thousands of games in Emerald. I've never noticed this before, but I completely trusted that Dave was telling the truth here. The Hail AI is really simple. Basically, it just checks the current weather. If there is any current weather that is not Hail, then use Hail. This is logical. It encourages the removal of weather that the enemy probably set up for themselves. But there's only one possible way that Hail can be used on turn 1 instead of Protect, and it's because Hail is getting this score of plus 1. So, I checked the Weather AI definition file. Oh. To explain this to all non-programmers, Game Freak forgot to code in a definition for no weather. The game's code is just numbers, and there's no number that tells the AI, hey, there's no weather right now. This is a massive mistake that should have been caught. Perhaps the exact battle system function fixes it in some way. Nope. Notice there is no case at all for no weather. It just does nothing. To underline that part, the AI really does nothing. There's no bugged value being written to memory. We just don't do anything at all. This immediately felt like the answer. You see, the check does nothing. But after we do the check for the weather, we're still running Pokemon Emerald. There's still a part of the game's code that we're going to look at and assume that's the answer to the question of what is the weather? This part of the code is a number. Now by default, we should assume it's zero. By Genfrey's own definition, zero is sunny day. So is that the answer? The check is broken and never does anything. So the answer that we check after that always says it's sunny day. So hail is used to change the weather from sunny day to hail. No. There's actually a huge problem with this. This might explain Glalie 1, but the factory has hundreds and hundreds of sets. As you may expect, Game Freak created lots of sets that use Sunny Day and Solar Beam together. Game Freak also gave a load of fire Pokemon in the frontier the move Sunny Day to boost their fire moves. If the weather check is completely broken when there is no weather and just says it's Sunny Day, wouldn't all of these Pokemon never use Sunny Day? Since if it's already sunny, then Sunny Day should fail and Basic AI should prevent its use. But I know this isn't true. I've played the game. These Pokemon use Sunny Day. In fact, now that I really think about it, they use Sunny Day perhaps even more than they should. This explanation must be wrong. And it's not just Sunny Day. I also know for a fact that Rain Dance Pokemon behave roughly as expected. They both do and don't use Rain Dance sometimes. Sometimes getting very close to an answer can be dangerous because in the desire to be rid of the problem, you can kind of force it to be true or come up with some kind of lie or workaround which isn't really correct. There was something that did ring a bell though. If you spend long enough staring at code like this, then part of it kind of seeps into your subconscious. I was pretty sure that I had seen part of this code recently in a different context. I was also pretty sure about one thing. While the weather expert AI was kind of broken, 
I was pretty sure that basic AI was not broken forever at this point. But that's a problem, because basic AI, as its name suggests, is pretty basic. Or is it? Well, that's not entirely true. Players often ignore basic AI because it's the most intuitive and easily understood part of the AI. Don't use Tackle against a ghost Pokemon. Don't use Toxic if the enemy is already poisoned. It's all so obvious. Basic AI often does nothing, but that's only really in terms of the end result. What basic AI actually does is a lot of checks that relate to type effectiveness and ability checks. In particular, there is another key player here, a rare but not irrelevant ability, Soundproof. Soundproof is infamous in Gen 3 PvP for another reason, but right now Soundproof is important because every single move in the game gets checked against Soundproof to see if it would fail. Obviously, this only matters if the opposing Pokémon actually has the ability Soundproof, but that means looking up the opposing Pokémon's ability. Here, Jolteon has Volt Absorb. That's obvious enough, but remember, it's code. Everything is just numbers. Volt Absorb corresponds to a number of 10. But what if this ability was a different number? What if this number exactly matched the number for Hail or another weather effect? Most of the abilities in this game would not do this, so it's exactly the kind of thing that might only sometimes bug the AI. This still wasn't fully correct, but we were getting closer. I want to make it very clear that both Will and Dave were heavily involved throughout this process and deserve a lot of credit for what I'm about to explain. The basic AI layer had actually just been solved. If the ability number of the opposing Pokemon matches the desired weather, the enemy AI cannot use that weather move. For Hail, that's the ability Speed Boost. Glalie 1 can never use Hail if the opponent has Speed Boost. For Rain, the ability is Stench, which is hilarious. For Sandstorm, it's Drizzle. Game Freak got really lucky here, as Drizzle will obviously set a real weather. Sun has no corresponding ability. The basic AI is hallucinating. It cannot read a blank weather effect, and instead uses the result from the ability lookup it had to do for Soundproof. This explains why factory sets with Sunny Day can still use the move Sunny Day. It should be broken, but it accidentally gets fixed by the Soundproof check, which sets this magic number for the weather to something that is not zero. So what about Expert AI? It's obvious that Gailey was getting a plus one score, from a different value being interpreted as either Sun, Rain or Sandstorm. And those are the numbers 0, 1 and 2. This can't be the ability check from Basic AI though. Remember, Jolteon's Volt Absorb is 10. That doesn't match any of these weathers. There must be something else happening before Expert AI comes in. Now while we were discussing this, Dave to his credit says something very clever. He said, Surely they just won't keep the old data. It's hard to know how sarcastic Dave was being here, but I was immediately sure that this was exactly the kind of nonsense that Game Freak would leave in its code base. Remember how I said the order of the AI layers never mattered before? Well, it does now. In fact, everything matters. Literally everything. I'm going to explain this as best as I can, because I'll be blunt, it's extremely complicated. When we check the weather, we're looking at this one number in the game's code somewhere. What is this number? Is it the ability of the enemy Pokemon? Well, yes and no. This number is used extensively in a lot of random areas of the code. When I realized this, I came incredibly close to just giving up and declaring the whole thing borderline random. But it's not random. By far the most important and repeatable part of the code that writes here is the part that checks how powerful a move is in Kill AI. That's really important because Kill AI runs just before Expert AI and Game Freak do not clean up this value. What's insane about this is that the moves are checked in order. That means that for Expert AI, the weather that the AI thinks is active is usually the result of the fourth move slot's power. So the behavior of the enemy AI is heavily influenced by the exact order of its moves. Let's return to the Glalie 1 example quickly. Glalie's fourth move is Protect. Protect does no damage, and so writes a value of zero to this value. When Hail checks the weather, this zero is still there and it's interpreted as sunny day. That's why Glalie 1 picks Hail, because Protect was in move slot 4 and gave a power value of 0. Now, I said just usually, and I meant it. A lot of moves check weird things and can change the behaviour of expert AI weather moves. For example, Meganium 1 has Light Screen. Light Screen writes the types of enemy Pokemon into the weather check slot which massively changes when it will or won't use Sunny Day. But this only matters because Light Screen is before Sunny Day in Meganium 1's move slots. 
In short, the way that the Gen 3 AI hallucinates weather is stupidly wacky and stupidly complicated and must be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. And it's not just moves that change the weather that care about what the weather currently is. Moves such as Dig and Synthesis also change their AI behaviours based on what they think the weather is right now. It's important to remember that none of this applies if there is a real weather effect. In that case, the code actually runs fine. It would understand, for example, if it was raining, that the current weather is rain. We almost missed this bug. Everyone else missed it for over two decades. In fact, the only reason we found this bug at all was because of the older protect bug giving protect a higher score than it should. Without this bug, I have no idea how long it would ever take to find this, or if we would find it at all. Now I want to change lanes and talk about what to actually do with this information. Obviously, a random factory player should not be expected to spend 3 hours reading the source code of Pokemon Emerald so that they can understand exactly how the enemy AI is going to use weather moves. That's ridiculous. At the same time, it's not fair if only people like me or Dave know about this and how it works. That's just a stupid, unfair advantage. I strongly believe that competition should do its best to equalize the playing field for everyone and make competition as accessible as possible. For this reason, me and Will have extensively studied and documented the behavior of every single Pokemon in the factory, which has any move that cares about what the weather currently is, and exactly how this will affect the AI scores during weather hallucination for that Pokemon. This exists right now, including a write-up by Will to explain everything that I've gone over in this video and more link in the description. My hope is that this equalizes factory competition as much as possible and doesn't gatekeep anything behind learning how to read code. I do expect there to be a few errors, however. This is an extremely new bug and understanding exactly what does and doesn't influence it is very complicated and difficult to work out. For this reason, please be patient with us as we slowly improve the documentation. This goes on top of excellent work that Mo and Will have done in general to make Gen 3 and Gen 4 AI behaviors much easier to read and understand links for that also. Let me know what you think about the Gen 3 weather hallucination bug as well. I am curious if anyone understood this properly just from watching the video once. I've also started doing Battle Frontier shorts on YouTube. Please check them out. I promise they're a lot more interesting than most of the slop shorts that seem really common nowadays. Until next time.